Today in Chris Performance Repair, I have a 6.2 liter DOD motor from a Yukon Denali here, and in pieces, as you can see. So I'm gonna go over a couple of things that are very good to know about not only this particular motor, but if you're planning on doing a DOD delete or have oil pressure issues, I'm just gonna cover some things while I have the pieces laying here and available to look over. I'm also gonna cover something on oil consumption, so stay tuned. You can see I have the oil pan off. I literally just pulled this oil pan off this motor because I'm doing a full delete on this vehicle. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and look inside this oil pan at a couple of things while it's off. You can see it's obviously dirty, but it doesn't have a thick layer of sludge on the bottom, which is a good sign. Uh, but we're gonna cover a couple things on this oil pan. First, before I do that, let's get into why I had to pull this thing apart and why the DOD was an issue. So, this one, is one of those where it wiped out the cam. This is cylinder one, intake valve, and the camshaft. I don't know how well you can see that, but it actually has a pretty nasty groove worn into the first lobe here. Uh, another thing that I have noticed is the second bearing surface here. There's a little bit of wear on the cam. Uh, this is for the variable camshaft, time, the variable timing part of the camshaft. This is gonna lose a little bit of oil pressure in the vehicle. The bearing has some score marks in it, so it's got a little bit of wear, more than what you would like to have. And the bearings can be addressed in the vehicle as far as getting them replaced. But this one is not bad enough that I don't feel it's necessary to replace. If you have one that needs to be replaced, you're gonna have to pull the oil pan, you're gonna have to pull the, there's like a, a cover, that a splash, I forget what it's called. The splash cover for the oil. Uh, anyway, you have to remove that cover and then above the rods you can knock with the bearings with a bearing, special bearing tool. And I'm not going to cover that today, but you could replace bearings in the vehicle. All the bearings except for the very last bearing can be done in the vehicle. It's just, if you have to do this one, you're going to have to do this one. If you have to do this one, you're going to have to do all of them in front of it. So, you know, it, this one's in good shape. So I would be able to technically do these two bearings and call it good if I really wanted to. I don't feel it's necessary because I'm deleting the displacement on demand. Now, if you have a little bit lower oil pressure than normal on these motors, that's fine. They have high oil pressure because they have a high volume pump in them to begin with. So as long as you don't have a displacement on demand, you don't really have to worry too much about being under 30 PSI. But if you go under 30 PSI, the magic number is technically 27 at idle. But if you start seeing under 30 or at 30, you're getting pretty dang close to the end of where your DOD is going to fail. Pretty much a guarantee. So there's that. Now, why did that cam get wiped out? Let's go over to the lifters here. And I'll show you the lifter that wiped out the cam. So this is a non-DOD lifter. These are the two DOD lifters. Okay, so you can see I have the lifters here, and this one is tight. I cannot turn it for the life of me. Uh, the reason they wear out is they, they actually rotate. So this plastic guide fails and allows the lifter to rotate. It rotates, starts rolling sideways on here, chews up the cam some, continues rotating, and then eventually it'll rotate so far that this oil hole is this direction. Now if you look here, you can see a mark. That mark there is from an oil galley that goes down this direction. So if this oil hole hits that oil galley, obviously it pressurizes that hole, activates this lifter, it collapses, and that's why you lose compression on a cylinder. So there's that one. I suppose one more thing I'd like to mention about these things is the cam phaser. So I am doing a delete on this thing, obviously, and I'm gonna be leaving the original phaser in here. I will be cleaning this motor up, putting some cleaner and a little ATF probably when I do the oil change just to let it clean up. ATF is a very high detergent oil, so that's why I do that. Now, this unit here, if you replace this with a non-VVT sprocket, so you're gonna have to replace not only the timing cover, but this gear here, you need to make sure that these cogs are the same. Now, the sprockets without VVT, instead of being this weird wave plate, it'll be like raised sections on it instead, raised and empty sections. So you wanna make sure you have the same amount of notches to make sure that your cam 
doesn't throw a cam sensor code. There's different versions of cam sensor triggers and you wanna make sure that you get one that matches the one that's in your vehicle, very important. Also the bolt in here, whether you have a variable valve timing motor or not, that bolt is a stretch bolt, you need to replace that when you do any service on this system. If you go to a three bolt cam instead, which you can get a performance cam then, then you also have to make sure you match the timing marks, but at least the three bolt cams, they don't have that single unused, you know, you know, bolt that you can't reuse. So now we're gonna get to oil pressure and oil pan scenarios. Since we already talked a little bit about oil pressure with cam bearing clearances and oil seeping out, I wanna make sure I comment on another thing related to oil pressure. This little guy here, a lot of motors have it, but not all of them. This is actually a pressure relief valve. Now, why they have this pressure relief valve, totally beyond me. I have no idea why the hell they would put that in there. I get it, it's a high volume system, but there's already a pressure relief valve built into the oil pump. Why not just utilize the one that's there and call it a day? For some reason, GM thought it would be wise to put one here. This thing needs to be taken care of. If you have this out, I'm trying to look for a wrench here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off in a minute. But this guy here, I guess there's a spring and a ball in here and they get stuck. So you wanna make sure you address this, clean it up, do the best you can to make sure that it's in good shape. I just found these little pieces sitting here. They're little pieces of RTV. Okay, that's no big deal. Uh, another thing you might wanna do is just pop these bolts out and clean this pan out really good. Uh, mainly because if you replace this gasket, you have to drill it out. And by drill it out, I'm talking about these rivets right here. So there's two rivets. I should be wearing safety glasses. If you do this, wear some safety glasses. But you can see that you have to drill these two rivets out in order to get the soil pan gasket off of there. And when you do that, a little bit of metal is gonna end up in the pan. And since there's metal in there, obviously I'm gonna clean it out. So I'm not too worried about it. I'll zip these bolts out, clean the pan up. It'll be good as new and I can put the new gasket on. I am not gonna waste the time, even though usually the new gasket comes with a spot to rivet it on there again. I'm not gonna bother riveting it on. It's pretty easy to slide the bolts in and keep them in place while you're putting the pan in, into the motor or onto the motor and you can keep from losing anything. Uh, on the oil pan gasket, there are little sections for RTV that are designed for it. They're like these little goofy corner sections and these spots you want to make sure you dab with RTV. Typically I do it on both sides, but I think you only really need to do it on the top side. The top side is where you have a seam on the engine block. Make sure you get that seam from one cover to the block. Cleaned up really, really well. Spray brake clean in there heavily. Get it nice and clean. That way when you do put your RTV on there, it is going to seal up properly. Now let's move on to oil consumption on these motors. And this is for not just the 6.2 by the way. I got to mention that. This covers pretty much every vehicle. Uh, as far as what I've talked about so far. I do have one more comment, 6.2 specific. I'll leave for the very end because it's related to the camshaft. But the valve covers. Now, this is the one with the PCV valve built into it. You can see the PCV valve here, and it's kind of like built into this cover. Now, this little plate here is actually riveted onto the cover, not with typical rivets, but more or less, the cover itself is molded with these little standoffs coming off of it. So they set the plate on there with a little bit of RTV, and then they take and smash these molded in or cast in features and it holds this thing in place. The, the issue with these and oil consumption comes from this valve cover. There's an updated valve cover that's sealed off better. And what it is is just a re-glued version basically. But these things will actually get leaks through the oil or the gasket material, the whatever RTD that GM uses. It, the splashing from the rockers will end up getting sucked into there, into the PCV valve, you'll end up with an oil consumption problem. So get the updated valve cover. If you take the time to make sure you purchase that, that'd be a very well worthy investment. As for addressing the oil pressure and this check valve deal, you wanna make sure you pull this guy off. I have not done this yet, so we're gonna learn together with this. Now, this is the part that must shoot the oil out, I assume. Oh yeah, there's a gap in here. Okay, so it comes out of the side of this pressure relief valve shoots into this guy and pops out. So let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. It's a all integrated unit. You can see we have the threads here, that deal there, and then there's a uh, basically a stamped to hold this little lid on here and there's a spring inside there. So I guess what I would recommend 
is either replacing this thing if it's available I'm gonna have to look myself I have not looked if there's a replacement available I will go ahead and throw a link below or a part number or something related to this in the little description section um, so be sure to check that out just in case I have a link for it but if not if this is something that needs to just be cleaned out uh, my suggestion I guess would be to put some cleaner of some sort in here pressurize it with air blow the relief valve make sure you actuate it a few times get it working and that way you can make sure that you take care of the system and get it cleaned up um, but if replacing it's an option that would be a much better option because I imagine the spring inside here could wear out so some, something to consider I'm gonna go ahead and just set this in here but I'll take care of it later I'll leave it nice and loose so I see it uh, but this guy here it actually causes very interesting oil pressure problems where you won't get above a certain pressure and your pressure will be slightly lower than normal but you will have pressure so you're, you're like what in the world's going on you won't have air in the system it'll just be kind of working uh, if you have a scenario where the pressure just does not seem to go as high as you would expect only climbs when you're at high rpm and it's sitting a little bit lower than you would expect this guy might be your your suspect these also have problems with the oil sump o-ring failing but if that's the case you will end up with air in the oil and you'll see fluttering with a mechanical gauge really bad fluttering and that's going to be something that you can maybe check with a special tool like the one that I made I'll go ahead and throw a little clip of that video up right now so there you have it there's the oil it's flowing through there but I see absolutely zero bubbles whatsoever I mean so that tool is something that I made for myself so that I could check for different oil pressure issues on these motors and that's something that's that's probably a worthwhile investment for a technician to take the time and make something like that if they service a lot of these vehicles now for the last and final thing that I need to mention specifically on the 6.2 liter if you're doing a DOD delete Texas speed is a great place to get your camshaft source from however they do not know of and nor do I of direct replacement 6.2 liter where it's got the same lift duration etc but is non DOD camshaft so you have to go with an LS9 camshaft or maybe a 6 liter camshaft you have to go with a different camshaft that has different lift and duration and you may or may not need to do a tune it might run just fine without it I will find out at the end of this project whether it runs fine without a actual tune or not um, obviously you still have to turn off the, the system but I'm a little worried about how the fueling and, and whatnot is going to act with a little bit different lift. If you guys felt this video was worth your time and energy listening to and you feel it saved you enough money or any other video that I have perhaps, be sure to check out my website. If you have no other reason but to support me, you can go ahead and pick up a shirt just like this one here. And... Uh, the only difference is you won't say owner on it, right by the boob there. But otherwise, pick up a shirt. It helps support me. Keeps me keeps me rolling, keeps me moving, keeps me putting these videos forward. And with that, like, share, subscribe. And as always, I hope to see you on another video. Thanks for watching.